you doing? I hope everybody's being safe out there in these streets. Hope you got your hand sanitizers and your mask <laughs> and staying, staying as safe as you can. I am just taking a few moments to uh, come on just to uh, share some really good news. Um, for anybody that's been following me for the last, oh my God, it's been about 10 years, I want to say. Uh, when I first started writing my first book, A Heart Not Easy Broken, the series is now about to be complete. Yay! Party poppers! <laughs> the final book in the series, Shattered, is going to be available this month. God, can you believe it? This month, November 17th, on all your favorite sales platforms. So that means Amazon, um, Barnes & Noble, Kobu, Smashwords, Google Play, iBook, everywhere. It'll be available. And if you get it now, you can pre get it for pre-sale for 99 cents. And it'll be 99 cents, I want to say, for the first week of its being released. And then it'll go to its regular price. So get in now, 99 cents. But anyway, I want to take a few moments just to kind of give you a little bit of heads up about that book. Um, that book was a challenge to write, um, for sure, um, because of the fact that I wrote one storyline and then it ended up being changed to something totally different. So I literally had to scrap a whole story that was maybe only like four or five chapters away from being completed and started all over again. And in doing so, not only that... The story is actually going to focus on all the characters from the previous five books. Yep, five different couples, different storylines are all going to be coming down to Miami Beach for Brian and Ebony's fifth anniversary. So the story, instead of it being one, it kind of takes, you know, lasts for like a couple of months or whatever. This story actually takes some cross, uh, happens over four days. And um, it's an examination or exploration, if you want to say, on where all these characters are. Because if you've read any of the, uh, any of the five books in the series, A Heart Not Easy Broken, Jaded, Lonely Heart, Nobody's Business, and Alone, then you've got to see the ups and downs that each of the couples went through. And you know that there were promises that they made to each other. But the reality is that sometimes as life goes on, things change, situations happen. Um, sometimes we're not always able to keep the promises that we made. So it's kind of like, what happens then? I have some interesting information that I'll be sharing about the reasons why I wrote the Butterfly Memoirs. Because that has been asked of me before. And I've, I've kind of dealt with talking about what each of the books were about to a degree but I, I've never really gone into much into what made me write each of the stories or just the reasons why I wrote in the first place so over the next couple of weeks I'm gonna try to get you guys a video a week that focuses on something different about each of the books um, and something that I've learned about writing hey it's the stuff I've learned about myself and we'll go from there sounds good Y'all want to stay in tune? Make sure you follow me. All the social media links below. <laughs> That'll be listed at the bottom of this video. Just follow me. Heck, make sure you follow me on my uh, YouTube channel here. Just so you can stay in the loop. But just a little stuff. Uh, let's, let's step back a little bit. Let's talk about why did I become MJ Kane? Interesting story. <laughs> It all started with the television show Lost. Y'all remember that TV show? <clears throat> I believe it was on ABC. Had several really good years. I think the first three years of that show were, they were the bomb. After that, it kind of went, yeah, I don't know. Other than to say that when the show finally did come to us, when the series did finally come to an end, I felt just as lost as I was in the beginning. But <laughs> believe it or not, that show does have to do with the reason why I started writing. Okay, so picture it. 2004, 2005-ish. Huh, Stay-at-home mom. I watched a lot of television and whatnot. Like I said, watched the show Lost. Started surfing around, learned how to use the internet and stuff like that. And stumbled across the fact that ABC had a whole website dedicated to the TV show. I 
spent a little bit too much time on that website to the point to where if you watch the TV show, you know that uh, around about season two, three, they found this bunker basically where they had to go push this button and type in this code like every couple hours. Well, yeah, the website had the button <laughs> and the code for you to put in. And my self did it. <laughs> Yep, I was pushing the damn button. Um, it was interesting. But anyways, the point is, one of the forums had a challenge. And it was to write a fan fiction story where you created your own character to somehow fit into an episode of the TV show or a scene on the show. I, with my vivid imagination at the time, said, hey... I'm an avid book reader. Heck, I was taking the kids to the library like once a week, sometimes twice. And we were checking out like books all the time. So, hey, hey, why not? So, I took a stab at it, which should have probably only been maybe like 300 words or something turned into maybe about 50 pages. I don't know. I pretty much created a whole character that followed the entire season, first season, every episode of season one of Lost. Like, I'm dead serious. Now, if you are a fan of the show, you know that show had flash forwards, flashbacks, and then towards the ends, they started flashing sideways, which I didn't even know was possible. <laughs> but hey, I created a character. I believe her name was Milena. Or something of that nature. It was something like that. I created a character, gave her a job, she was a zoologist, basically, who was on the airplane with everybody, um, coming from Australia, because she had been working down at one of the Australia zoos, and she was on the plane that crashed, because, again, if you watch the show, you know, the first season, they had, like, polar bears on this island in the middle of nowhere that nobody knew where they was at. So, you know, it kind of fit in with her job, so, you know, I made her work in. So, I had some scenes where it was the flash forward, you know. Um, to the current situation of being interacting with the different characters doing different scenes of the TV show. And then I have flashbacks as to what was happening to her that got her out there to um, Australia in the first place. It was pretty cool. The family liked it. I took it, wrapped it up, put it aside. Never thought about it again. About a year or so later, um, I had a stroke. Um, several, actually. I was 32. And ended up in Emory University Hospital for like two weeks. Um, I'm blessed to still be here. Uh, because my understanding is from my husband as he tells me the tale of what happened um, during that time. There were several other young women who came in around about the same age. And amazingly all of us had been having strokes and had blood clots. Like literally blood clot on the brain which is what caused me to have the strokes and whatnot and um being at emory as a teaching hospital there were different uh strategies i believe that they use on all of us um i believe at least one of the women didn't survive i was fortunate enough to be able to have survived um when i did leave the hospital i I, it took me a while to recover. Like, I was partially paralyzed on my right side. Like, no use of my arm or leg um, for a period of time when I was in the hospital. Uh, through the encouragement of, of my husband and my family, I was able to start rehab, basically, um, in the hospital and continue it at home, uh, home alone, basically, because, hey, didn't have insurance. And I will tell you, that's when I learned. You got to have certain kind of love for video games. Because I'm going to tell you, if it wasn't for that game Tetris. You know, pushing the button and making the little geometric shapes and all that stack up and whatever. I used to love, I, well, I still do, love playing Tetris back in the day. Before pre-stroke. So I was really good at it. That game is what rehabbed me when I was on like no lie it was starting at the bottom you know the one little shape that's all you had that moved super super slow for you to stack them up i can tell i'm gonna tell you it was such a challenge that's how much i had mental issues there that 
it I would it I could not get the shapes that one shape to line up even as slow as it was going it took a lot of concentration and practice to get the brain to work right the hands to work right the hand eye coordination to work right because I'm gonna tell you I couldn't even write I couldn't even read like the day before I ended up in a hospital I was playing video games with my kids and my head had started hurting really bad and I went to go sit down to try to read it was a Star Wars book that I had got because I was really into the Star Wars books at that particular point in time and I went to try to go read or whatever and it was like looking at hieroglyphics like legit I could not read like A did not look like the letter A B C D all the rest of the alphabet absolutely nothing um but like I said, coming home, it took, I can't remember how many weeks it took for me to finally start being able to make out letters again to where my brain was starting to recognize how to read again. But I know every daggone day I sat down with a book and I stared and stared and cried and got pissed off and stared and stared and stared until I could finally get my brain to start recognizing this stuff. So, again, this is around 2006. Well, 2009, I was much, much better after testing and, and everything by doctors and, and continue to rehab myself. And, again, to help with my loving family. Guys, I love you guys. I would not be here if it wasn't for my family. I promise you. Um, I also wouldn't be a writer if it wasn't for my family. Um, but basically around about 2008, 2009, my husband one day when I was sitting there playing, cause again, like I said, video games were my friend. <laughs> so I have rehab, but it had been a couple of years. So I had started playing one of these Star Wars video games, you know, with my sons really, and had managed to beat Darth Vader on the game at least one good time. <laughs> and my husband one day said, look, um, so you remember that story you wrote? Um, why don't you try doing something different? Why don't you pull that out and see about writing some more? You know, it was pretty good. So, like, okay, um, alright, i do that. Why not? So, I pulled the story out, because I had printed it out. Pulled the story out, read over it, tried to figure out how I could take the same character, the same storyline, and go into season two of Lost. And I just wasn't feeling it anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't get it in, like that anymore. So I decided I was going to do something different. It was like, all right, well, then why don't I just try to give this girl her own story? Then I got her backstory. Uh, why don't I change her backstory into a story? So that's what I did. Milena became Ebony, who still was a veterinarian or wanted to be a veterinarian, and who still lived in California, because that's the way I had her set up in my, um, my lost story. Except now she needed friends. And in come Yasmin and Caitlin. And that story was pretty good. I still have that story of that version of the story too from beginning to end. Um, because at the time I wanted to, I started reading books about how to write. So I started learning different concepts about how you tell your stories. And so I ran across this one called, and I feel like I'm about to so say this so incorrectly. So YouTube, everybody, I apologize in advance. <laughs> But I believe it was called a maturation plot, which is basically when you have a character start off at one age, like as a child or teen or whatever. And during the course of the story, they evolve and they grow and they age. So I was kind of sticking with that. So with Milena, a.k.a. Ebony... The story was she was living in North Carolina, graduated high school. Her family, including her twin brother, Trevon, um, drove her all the way across country for her to go to college to start her to career, um, her dreams of becoming a veterinarian. And so that story was all about how she met Caitlin and Yasmin, how they became friends, how she ended up dating Brian, <laughs> and dealing with Javon. Yeah. Those characters were all in this same first book, which are all the same characters that you'll find if you've read A Heart Not Easily Broken. But the story was completely different. When I'm talking about completely different, if you've read A Heart Not Easily Broken, you know what the deal is with Javon, right? 
Okay. Um, in the original story, Ebony actually was dating Javon. He was older, but she was dating him. And Brian was his roommate. And somewhere along the lines, Brian sees him treating her dirty, basically cheating on his stuff. And and he ends up going in and it's, I want to almost say save the day, but they become they become um in a relationship. So Brian and Ebony always got together, just not the same way. Um, but like I said, I wrote that story, felt really good about it. Thought, girl, I got this. I know how to tell a story. Did the way it ended, I said, you know what? Let me get Yasmin a story. So I done wrote Yasmin a little story and stuff, right? Then I, oh, I'm sorry. Let me backtrack. So, with the original Heart Not Easy Broken, I gave that to my family, asked them to please read it, give me your feedback, let me know what you think. Didn't quite make it all the way through the whole book. I think maybe the first four or five chapters may have been read. And then it was kind of like, Nyum. yeah, you're missing some things. You need to do a little bit better. So I tried it again. Then I went through a period of I gave up. I got frustrated. I got mad. I gave up. I was challenged to put my laptop down for a month and not to even think about writing again to figure out if writing is what I really wanted to do. And I did. And a couple of weeks in, I got pissed off because I really wanted to work on this story. So when that time was up, I got my laptop out again, got it on, got it going, and A Heart Not Easily Broken was rewritten to be what it is today. No longer a maturation plot because at this point, Ebony, if... If you haven't read A Heart Not Easy Broken, I seriously say please go pick up a copy. It is so freaking easy for you to do right now. Um, a Heart Not Easy Broken ebook is free across all the platforms. So Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobu, iBooks, uh, Google Play, everywhere. You can go get it, download A Heart Not Easy Broken for free right now and check it out. Um, oh, I got some other news. I'll tell y'all that when I get finished. But anyways, okay, so you can check that out for free. And you can get to know the characters. But like I said, as I finished A Heart Name Easy Broken, um, I gave that to my family, the same folks who was like, yeah, you need to work on it again. And was really, really nervous. Like, I didn't even give, I didn't even share the whole first, first the whole book. I just like the first couple of chapters because I'm like, it, the rule in writing is if you can't catch readers in the first three chapters, ixnay on the project, try it again. So, first three chapters came down the steps. Hey, where the rest of the book at? I was like, oh, for real? Okay. So, <laughs> I got the rest of the book. They love the rest of the book. Shouts out to Lady Kane. Mwah! <laughs> she has always been there for me from the beginning. Uh, thank you so, so much. Um, she pointed me in direction, and from that point on, I pretty much was like, if LK does not like my stories, then nobody is, because LK does not le like reading romance novels at all. <laughs> so the fact that I was able to get it to a point that she could, that was my, that was the good testing point right there. But anyways, from there... I wrote the story about Yasmin because, again, if you've read A Heart and Easy Broken, Yasmin was not in a happy spot. She needed some help. She was seriously the top. She was really what the title of her book is, jaded. She really was. She was very jaded towards relationships um, and anything like that, uh, unless it had to do with her just focusing on herself. Caitlin got her own book, um, Lonely Heart, which we'll dive into that in a future video. But anyways, and then from there, the rest of the stories have come until we've got to the final book. So, that's just a little feedback, a little something behind the scenes I haven't really talked too much about. Now, if you've seen me in person and talked to me, that's pretty much what I've, the story that I've told everybody, that's because that's exactly what happened. It's not something I've really talked about online very much, but hey, it is 2020, people. We in a whole new world. It's a whole new game. <laughs> And at this point, one of the things, I think everybody has learned something. Everybody came into 2020 
with a mind, focus, and energy that you wanted to do something different with your life in 2020, from 2019 to 2020. Some of us may have gotten started and then been seriously derailed because of COVID and everything that's been going on with it. It's been a life challenge. Some of us have been able to move forward. Some of us have not. Some of us have slid backwards. I ain't even going to lie. I've been all over the dog place this year. I, I can't even lie. I have been. And I feel like I've gotten to a point now that we're nearing the end to where I'm finding my own again. I hope that makes sense. And I'm finding me and learning some new things about myself. And now accepting the challenges that have been laid before me for the last couple of years that I was too scared to take. And I've reached a part in my life now to where I'm really starting to find a whole new appreciation for life. The fact that we only got one. And what we do with it matters. So with that being said, I'm seriously trying not to have some slight tears of my eyes. <laughs> it's emotional. But with that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up because I need to get back to work. <laughs> I'm on my break right now, just enjoying the, I don't know what weather we're having in Georgia today. It started like in the 30s. Right now it's in like the 50s. I hear it's supposed to be back towards the 70s in a couple of days. I don't know. I just say Georgia is the state to where you can, when the seasons change, you can mess around between coming from winter to spring and from summer to fall, you will have an in-between, all the daggone seasons. You, in the state of Georgia, you'll have one day and experience all four seasons in one doggone day. You don't even know how to walk out the house. <laughs> you just kind of layer up and then strip it off during the course of the day. I don't know. But anyways... <laughs> I'm extremely, extremely happy to say that the entire Butterfly Memoir series, which has previously been available in paperback at all six library branches of Clayton County. And by the way, there is a seventh branch that will be opening soon. Stay tuned for details. But hey, they even got the books. <laughs> so technically, my, actually, my books are available, paperbacks are available at all seven Clayton County library systems. I mean, library branches in the Clayton County library system. So if you are a Georgia resident, have a Pines library card, you can go online and request one of my books from any of your Georgia libraries. Um, as long as they are on the Pines system and they will be brought to wherever you are. I think that's awesome. But if you don't want to do that, Guess what? The entire Butterfly Memoir series is now available for ebook sharing. That checking out is checking outage. <laughs> I can't even say it. You can now check out the ebook version of The Heart Night Easily Broken, Jaded, Lonely Heart, Nobody's Business, Alone. And guess what? They've already pre ordered Shattered. So that will be available on release day. And you can get it in ebook through Libby, which is through the Clayton County Library's um, digital resource platform. So to go back again, go to claytonpl.org. Go down to the digital resources. Look for where it shows where you can get um, Libby, which is our digital uh, ebook uh, e-reader platform through the library. And you can go in, download your book, check it out or whatnot. Enjoy yourself. Leave a review. Go back and buy your own versions for your own e-readers. They're affordable <laughs> on all sales platforms. Buy the, buy the paperback. Hey, however you want to do it. Um, I just love and appreciate everybody's time, support, comments, feedback that have been given to me over the years about this series. Um, again, I'm so excited that it's now wrapping up because I'm currently trying to, I'm specking out a couple of different scenarios, situations or whatnot. Um, so hopefully the next book, no, ain't no hopefully, words are power, words matter. The next book will be coming out next year. Is there a date? Nope, ain't got one. But we ain't saying sometime, but it's going to be next year. It's going to be something a little different and something new. 
a whole nother kind of voices and uh, storytelling. I think it's going to be fun. It's that challenge that I told you guys that I was too scared to take over the last couple of years that I am now. I'm going to say I'm going to be uh, electric sliding into 2021. <laughs> I'm going to electric slide my way into 2021 on some new stuff and be ready to happily share it. But until then, I'm going to go. Check me out online. Follow me. Download me. Read me. <laughs> the Butterfly Memoir Series by your girl, MJ Kane. You will love it. I just want to give a quick shout out to the fam. To the Grind Factory Studios, to Major Movement Inc., to Candid Creations, for all of the love and support that has been given um, to me over these years, and who are got my back right now and are pushing me and encouraging me to continue to do and be the best that I can be. Shouts out, much love, you guys. If you're looking for some great, great music. Grind Factory Studios. Check them out. Grind Factory, thegrindfactory.com. Check it out. Great music from LK, from K Tech. You would not believe it. Fellow authors, if you guys are looking to do um, audiobooks of your own um, or anything of that nature, Grind Factory Studios will hook you up. Some new stuff happening right there. I'm telling you, you got to call, you get all kinds of information. If you guys are needing book covers, promotions, any of those kind of things, videos, whatnot, my girls over here at Candy Creations, they got you, okay? They will hook you up. So I'm going to put everybody's links and stuff below um, so you guys can definitely check it out. Until then, until next week, when I come back and I'm going, like I said, I promise, I'm going to come back. I'm going to talk more about me in writing, why I've written, because today I just told you the beginning of how I started writing. But there's more. Because as they say, um, what's the saying? As they say, the rest is history. Well, we're going to dive in a little bit of MJK history. How about that? Why not? But anyway, love you. It's your girl MJ Kane. Stay safe again. I don't care what they saying on news. Sanitize them hands. Put on that damn mask. <laughs> Keep yourself safe. Care about yourself, care about your children, care about your spouses, your family members, your co-workers, anybody else. Cause you gotta care about yourself and take care about take care of yourself and not be expecting everybody else to be doing stuff right so that you can be safe too. No, you're only gonna be safe and make it on your own. Take care of you, okay? Peace out.